Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today is a musings and what I'm writing with video. This is for the month of May. Um, so, a little update on what I've been up to, um, outside of the pen world that is. Uh, so, I have just finished a season of a new Australian opera based on a, a convict who uh, escaped a, a, a prison camp and ended up uh, living with um, an indigenous community uh, in that was based here in the in the Port Phillip area uh, of Melbourne and uh, that opera was called Buckley it was written by a local Melbourne composer and uh, I played William Buckley I had to grow my beard out for it and you know, there are pictures on Instagram and things like that um, and uh, yes yeah, so I'm glad to sort of be back more like me now uh, but yeah that that Opera was a real challenge, both musically, dramatically, and also in terms of life and all of that, because it had me, um, it was a three week rehearsal process and it had me driving a lot, um, sort of, you know, 230 kilometers each day um, for work. So I put up a map, but like, basically, I'm on the, the west side of, the, of Port Phillip Bay, uh, just to the west side, and this was right round on the east side on the sort of far end, so I had to sort of do quite a lot of driving to and fro, and um, yeah, crikey, that took it out of me. Um, it, was a, it was a, you know, it was, it was exhausting. But, you know, I think any time you get to create a new work, it, uh, it, it it's uh, worth the effort. Um, I'm gearing up to a production of The Elixir of Love, which is, once again, touring regional Victoria, uh, which is exciting. I'm playing the role of Belcore, who's sort of like the cartoon character soldier. And if this was a romantic comedy, Belcore is like the guy that the girl thinks that she wants um, until she realises she's in love with the best friend. Uh, so it's a good fun little opera, um, uh, with a cast of some of my, you know, my best mates. Uh, also rehearsing a production of Cosi Fan Tutte, the Mozart opera, uh, which uh, is with a company called Emotion Works, and they, they uh, intersperse, um, they fuse two genres of music, so we take the opera, which is the Mozart, and this one we're doing like 1950s and 60s uh, rock. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of fun. But let's now get sort of to pen related stuff. So what I want to cover is very quickly what I've um, what I've gotten in the last sort of months. Just a few of the bits and pieces that are of particular interest to me, um, and then talk a little bit about a few things that have come up. We'll see where we go from there. Okay. So uh, f first thing I will say is that Twisby just keep releasing new stuff, and they keep hinting at stuff they're going to be releasing, and it's full on, and my bank account is going to hate it. But the purple ALR, the trans now the transparent orange Eco, uh, there's talks of ink, there's talks of ink bottles, there's talks of everything, and that uh, Aurora pen that they put out was gorgeous, let's hope they put out more of those, I haven't, I missed that, I would have loved to have got one, um, I just couldn't get it at the time, and by the time I could, they were gone. That is life. So let's hope they bring out more of those. Um, but one thing that did come out this year was the Lamy Bronze, uh, and this is the Lamy Bronze pen. You can see a overview of this on my channel. I'll, I'll link it below. I got the pen and uh, the ink, um, and I'll just quickly show you, just in in very quick detail, uh, not detail, in in very quick uh, close up uh, here, just uh, what they what they look like. So here we have the Lamy Bronze. This is the uh, All Star, of course. Uh, pen. I have it in the medium nib. I've done a video on this, um, so you can check it out. But I just sort of show it again to you in some sort of, you know, sort of nice light here, and see the sort of colour that it actually is. It's it is quite nice. It's growing on me, I think. Um, yeah, Lamy Bronze All Star. I haven't got any safaris. I'm toying as to whether to get one of those. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see what happens there. And uh, here is the ink bottle, um, as the usual sort of Lamy bottle with a little blot of paper in there. It's very light orange. Um, if you look at it here on um, Rhodia paper, uh, you can see there that it's quite quite light. It's got some nice shading. Uh, a bit of depth there, but nothing sort of too too full on. Another Lamy ink that I got uh, is on the Crystal series. I tested them all uh, in a shop here, um, wrote them on paper, sort of looked at them all, had some interesting thoughts and feelings about a few of them, uh, but a couple really bump, uh, jumped out, uh, and the one that really jumped out was um, Azurite. Uh, now I'm doing a review of this ink, so you'll see a proper review of that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, really love it. Once again, I'll just very quickly now uh, show you what that looks like. Here is the Lamy Crystal Azurite colour, a nice sort of sapphire blue purpley colour with some lovely gold 
green uh, sheen on it. The bottle these come in are really cool. Um, so it's a similar sort of box to what you normally get. Um, it's in a little bit of cardboard here, and it's a little 30ml bottle, so it is less ink than you get in the regular bottles. Um, it's got a great cap, good opening, nice ink, and performs really, really well. Um, watch out for my review of um, of this ink. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of this beautiful sapphire blue, which I really quite like. In the last year or so, Visconti have re released a couple of sort of lower end entry level pens. Um, still not cheap pens, uh, but the one that jumped out at me to start with because of the, the design uh, was the Mirage, and so I got the Coral here. Um, it's a really, really lovely pen. Now I got it with a broad nib. Um, I'm going to be getting the Breeze as well, because uh, I'd like to review that pen, I'd actually like to look at them together. Um, but yeah, this pen is actually really quite nice. It does have a very small nib, that's my only sort of big thing about it is that the nib is very little. Um, but it's a nice pen, it writes really well, feels nice in the hand, and the facets are great. Uh, so when uh, the Breeze comes out, I might do a little bit of a comparison video just to show them uh, together. But yeah, so I also picked up this and i um, love to know your thoughts on the Mirage actually, because um, it seems like a really decent pen. So let me know in the comments below. Many of you would be familiar with the Australian retailer Bookbinders Online. Now they uh, sell pens and stationery, a lot of sort of Japanese range stuff, uh, online and they have a brick and mortar store. Now they originated as a company that made a lot of their own products and then sort of moved away from that and recently they've sort of come back to that and they've relaunched their entire business including rebranding their entire business. Um, they are now called Standard Bindery uh, and they've got a really lovely sort of vintage sort of feel about what they do. They're making their own notebooks and have a lot of their own products and as well as I think still selling all the other products they're moving back to where they started, that is making products. Uh, so they were kind enough to send out a bunch of things for me to look at, or a couple of things for me to look at. Uh, so I thought I'd just quickly show you uh, those things. So a couple of little items that I got sent out first are blotting paper, which is also, which is always very handy. I actually use blotting paper a lot. This uh, interesting medallion, um, which I'm going to see if I can get it onto my uh, traveler's notebook, uh, because also I got the uh, the, the leather... Uh, stuff um, and you know sort of protect and, and maintain the leather so I thought that would be great for my travels notebook as well um, so really nice to get little bits and pieces like that but the thing that interested me the most of course were the notebooks because I'm a I love paper and I love all this sort of stuff so they send me up this is how they come packaged and the bigger ones come packaged in a very similar way with the brown paper and all of that it's got the really cool low branding on it I do like the branding a lot uh, and wrapping brown paper, and these are Tomo River paper notebooks. So you've got the small ones here, which use the cream paper. Uh, they're 52, the 52 GSM. This is 124 by 90 millimeters uh, with 80 pages. Um, and they, they, their slogan is um, archive everything. And so like these are really, they've got strong covers and all that sort of stuff. As you'll see here in the larger version, which I've got, which are the A5. Now, nice sort of branding there on the back of the book, which is nice. Tomo River paper, these use the white. Um, I'm using one of these, I'll be doing a review of these of course. Uh, I'm using one of them as um, for a project that I'll tell you about in just a minute that I've started. Um, as this is the beginning of May, I wanted to do something for May that I, um, sort of a themed thing, uh, which I'll get to in just a second. So I'm using uh, this for that. Um, but as it's Tomo River paper, of course you're going to have really awesome quality um, notebooks and you know they're triple staple bound so they're st strong 270 gram covers which you know makes for you know sort of really durable sturdy as I said archiving of all of this so that's really great these products look fantastic I'm going to do a closer video of these in a couple of days um, and then we'll individually review sort of a couple of items as well when I get um, a chance so these are particularly the the notebooks before I get on to my what I'm writing with and my project for May, I just wanted to say I've been receiving some amazing comments. Love what you guys, how you share with me, how you share what you're writing with, questions, comments, answers, all that sort of stuff. It's really great. The suggestions you make for products and pens, awesome. But I have been receiving a couple of really funny trolling comments um, about being left-handed particularly. It is just, it just warms my heart. Um, these comments are so ignorant and they are so lacking any understanding of reality um, that it quite frankly makes me feel good. 
um, you know, uh, equating my being left-handed to being of the devil, um, equating being taught or not taught to write right-handed um, to be um, equating it to criminal acts. It's just so, so far removed from reality. Get a grip. These people who have been making these comments have been reported and removed and blocked and all of that sort of stuff. So I keep on top of it all, but seriously, like I'm left-handed. I write with my left hand. I was actually, when I was a kid, I was ambidex completely ambidextrous and now writing is the only thing I do with my left hand. Everything else is almost completely shared between both. Um, and like, it doesn't wreck fountain pens. Some pens write better left, uh, better right-handed than left-handed. Some pens write perfectly fine left-handed and won't be great for a right-handed writer. Uh, if you've got an issue with that, don't watch my videos. Find a right-handed reviewer. I'm absolutely more than comfortable with that. I'm... So now we move on to my favorite part of the video, which is where I talk about what I'm writing with. I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as possible because I realize this has turned into a really long video, um, or long for what I want these to be. So this month it's May. I'm starting a thing that I'm calling Robert Oster Month. And what that means for me is that every day I'm gonna use a different Robert Oster ink. So that means that every week I'm gonna go through seven pens, um, and actually more likely it would be eight because I'll have a, a separate sort of everyday carry writer pen. I like the bright colored Robert Oster inks, uh, which aren't always like, I need a blue, a dark blue or a black inked at all times for work and things like that, or something along those lines. Um, and every day on Instagram, I'm going to post a picture of the pen and the ink that I've chosen for that day. So 31 Robert Oster inks, um, and like, which is just a dip in the ocean because the guy has like hundreds. Um, but for, in the sake of this, one ink a day for the, the month of May. Um, so seven of the eight pens I have inked today are inked with Robert Oster inks. Uh, and that's exciting. So I'm going to ink them up at the start of the week and then paste them out throughout the week to let them out. And that's how we will do this. So I'll run through the pens that I'm using this week. I'll then do a very quick writing sample with them all, and then you can all go home. Okay, so let's start. So we'll start with Robert Austin pens. The first pen is the Twisby Diamond 580 ALR, and this is inked with Robert Oster Deep C. Beautiful dark sort of tealy aqua ink, really lovely. Next I have the Jinhao 51A, which is a little hooded nib, and this is a really affordable pen. Um, nice sort of acrylic-y finish. Can't remember what that's called, it's like the espresso or something like that. This is inked with Robert Oster Motor Oil, which is a brownie green sort of color. Uh, not unlike something like Sailor Ricky Char. Um, beautiful ink, and it's a really well, the ink performs super, super well as well. Next, I have my Sailor 1911 Standard, uh, and this has one of my favorite nibs on it. It's got the I don't know if you've got to see this uh, in this, but I'll show it up close. This has got the music nib on it. Uh, the Sailor Music nib is basically just a big, big, broad nib. It's just fabulous to write with. And I have this inked with the $10 Blue, uh, which was a special release a couple of years ago for the new $10 note here in Australia. Next, I have the Monteverde Ascenza. Now, this is, uh, I've got with one of my favorite stub nibs on it. It's just a 1.1. Um, it's a great pen. Awesome, awesome pen. Um, faceted, nice material good construction and writes beautifully and one of the stub nibs that I actually do really like writing with. I have this inked with uh, Dark Star Blue from Robert Oster and it is, that was uh, made with the Dark Star Notebook Company uh, and it's a really lovely sort of dark bluey, sort of almost grey blue sort of colour. It's very nice. Next is the Platinum Procyon, uh, which I have in the, I think it's Citrus, I think that's what they call it, bright yellow. I Love this pen. Medium nib, nothing fancy, light, sort of, not necessarily the most robust feeling, but something about it I really, really like. Uh, and I've got this inked with, um, I don't know how to say it, so it's just the NG Special 16 uh, ink, which is a very cool yellow-orange, which you'll see in just a second as well. Then I have the Pilot Explorer. Now, this is a pen that I am not convinced about at all, uh, but it writes okay. So I survive. Um, yeah, I've got this inked with Robert Oster uh, Chartreuse, which uh, is a greeny yellow. Um, 
there's a review for that on my channel if you'd like to find it. The last one I have of the, in the Robert Osser is the Faber Castell Basic, uh, which I have inked with Green Lime, I think it's called, for memory. Um, this pen is just the most glorious thing to write with. If it had a different grip section, I know that was a problem for a lot of people, it would just be the most incredible, incredible writing pen. Love it. And then last but not least, this is not the Robert Osser one, this is just my sort of everyday writer for this week, and it will be my uh, pen of the week this weekend. Um, is the Lamy 2000, and this is inked with Lamy Petrol. Uh, I've had this inked for a couple of weeks, it is just... <sighs> yeah, words don't... can't describe this pen. While I'm here very quickly, I should just mention one other thing that I've been looking at, and a few of you have seen videos on my channel. Uh, this is before I just do the writing sample. A few of you have seen on my channel, I've done a couple of uh, videos of items from, from Zinziba Design, uh, Etsy store here in uh, Melbourne, uh, doing pen sleeves and things like that. Well, she started making pen rolls, uh, and we're sort of developing them and sort of finding the best sort of um, designs, but, you know, something simple, you know, elegant, and using interesting uh, fabrics. So this is the basic concept, is that it's a, you know, you've got your slots, little flap, and then you roll it up when the pens are in it and you wrap the cord around. Um, so I have two here. I love this purple uh, one. I think that looks great. Um, so we're working on those. I'm going to make a little video about them in a couple of, in a couple of days, hopefully, if I can get around to it. Um, but yeah, really interesting little products. And check out Sinsburg again. I'll link them below. They're worth, um, they're worth looking at if you're after pen stuff and she does do custom orders if you want to chat to her about things you're interested in. So let's do a writing sample with each of these pens uh, and then uh, I'll come back and sign off. Okay, here we are with a writing sample uh, for what I'm writing with this week. Now, as I said, I'm doing a Robert Oster thing, so there's a lot of Robert Oster ins sort of coming up through this week's um, pens, um, but this is, uh, we'll start here with the, um, I can't remember what order I did these in, so they might be different to how I introduced them, uh, but this is the Twisby. Diamond 580, this is the AL, this is the R version with a medium nib, good steel nib, lovely pen to write with, got to say, nice and wet, and the ink is Robert Oster, deep sea, really nice, lovely, lovely ink, dark and rich and saturated, and it's a nice sheen when you get it, if you want that. Next, I have the Jinhao 51A, uh, which is a really affordable pen. Even with this like, different sort of acrylic finish, you can get them cheaper if you just get the plain plastic finish. But this one, like, it's quite... Like, that's actually quite beautiful. Um, it's got a, a, a very fine nib. Um, and actually writes really smooth. So this is the 51A. And I think this is a fine, but, you know, it sort of could be an extra fine but not a fine, extra fine, extra fine if that makes sense. Uh, and the ink is Robert Oster, surprise, surprise, motor oil. As I said, this is a lovely sort of dark green, almost sort of brown colour ink, um, as you can see there, and uh, a bit like Ricky Char, something like that. Lovely ink, and it's always been one of my favourite Robert Osters, actually, since from the moment I tried it. Next is the Sailor 1911 Standard. Uh, with the music nib, which I said I would show you up close, so let's have a look at that while we're here. Um, it's a big old nib, um, just lovely, 14 karat nib, great. So we have the Sailor 1911, so it's the standard. As you can see, it's a wet, wet writer, beautiful pen to write with, and it's a 14 karat music nib. Um, just so you can see, this is uh, firstly this is the Australian ten dollar blue. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Like line variation, you know, because of the nature of the music nib. But super, super wet, like. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Love it. Next, uh, we'll go with the Monteverdi Ascenza. See the, the you know, nice material once again. 
nice build quality really really great value for money these pens um so not expensive at all monteverde ascenza and so this is the 1.1 millimeter once again not not a dry pen um which is nice and the ink here is a robert oster dark star blue really lovely really really lovely and a good match for this pen pilot explorer next um yeah jury's still out it just feels flimsy and light uh and seeing as though it's not a cheap pen like it's not it's not a ten dollar pen this is a you know above twenty dollar american pen it's i'm yeah i'm not entirely sure pilot explorer and this is a medium <clears throat> and this ink is robert oster chartreuse Interesting ink. Once again, done a review of this, so check out the review if uh, it's um, something you're interested in. You can find it on my channel. Okay, let's keep moving. Platinum Procyon. Um, cool pen. Nice section. I like the feel of this section. Uh, and the nib, it's sort of interesting. So, yeah, um, really good pen. Not a cheap pen, not like a, a preppy or anything like that, but I think it's really worth the money. Oops, better on. There you go. It's so again a medium, lots of mediums in my collection. Um, and the ink is the Robert Oster Special 16. I really, really like this ink. I really like how sort of shady it is and how, you know, so sort of it's a nice orangey yellow, but there's lots of depth and there's lots of color in it. Beautiful. Uh, what's left? We have the Faber Castell. This is the uh, so the basic. Oh, so wet. Um, and this is a medium again, but it's a very broad medium, um, and a very very wet medium. I sometimes like. I love love it. The, you know, the wetter the better, but. This is almost verging on sort of too wet. Um, this is green lime, which is a, a fabulous green. It's just absolutely awesome. But like, for instance, like that is just, you can see that that is just laying down a ton of ink. But it's great on this paper, rodeo paper here, where you get a little bit of shading sort of coming through because that's beautiful. But so those are the Robert Oster uh, pens that I have inked. The other one I have inked here is the uh, Lamy 2000 with um, petrol. I'm just going to scribble it down here on the top. I'm going to be doing, as I said, this is my pen of the week for this coming week. Um, but just to show you how it writes here. And this is the medium nib. And the ink is Lamy petrol. So watch out for my pen of the week uh, with this pen uh, and ink combination. It's just absolutely one of my favourites. I love it. Um, such a cool ink, that sort of dark teal green. They did a great job with that one. I think the you know dark, dark lilac and petrol were two of the best special editions. If they were back in the collection as standard colours, I think they would do really, really well. But anyway, that's my uh, pens of the week, what I'm writing with this week. Um, Check out my Instagram for the Robert Oster month of May and we'll um, show a lot of his very cool links. Well, that was my long musings video and uh, what I'm writing with for this week. Um, I said I'm busy with work. I've got three operas on the go. Um, it's madness. It's fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, keeping up with life and all of that sort of stuff, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an experience sometimes. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and found what I uh, found all this stuff of some use or if you've got Products you may not have known about you can have a look at them all of that sort of stuff check out standard bindery the link down here as well Hopefully I think I've 
Hopefully I'll remember to add all these links. Um, if I haven't, let me know so I can, so I can add them. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit the notifications button. Every time you do, I get uh, my, my, my videos get more and more out there so people can actually see them and uh, hopefully benefit from some of the information that I have to share or the products that I share and things like that. And also the companies who, um, you know, sort of who do uh, support this channel um, appreciate it as well. They appreciate your support. So check them out. You know, it's, it's, it, you know, it's worth supporting, particularly the smaller businesses uh, and the custom makers and all those sorts of things. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me. Uh, you can comment on any of my videos here. You can send me an email, all of that sort of stuff. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, let me know. And if there's a way you'd like to support this channel or you know of a way of someone who would, get in touch and let's see what we can do. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you later.